for buildings, construction, project management, and a green building and sustainable constructions. With that, we'll have Dr. Chen talk about the energy efficiency that applies and applying loads. Thank you. Uh, okay, good morning. Um, welcome to my presentation. I will try to hurry up so we can all have lunch. <laughs> and today my topic is about energy efficient appliances and a plug load. So I will talk about a few things in this presentation. So first I, I will explain what plug load are and why home appliances and plug-in electronics matter and how do plug-ins use energy. And then I will offer some solutions to the presented problem. And what are plug loads? So plug loads refers to energy used by appliances, devices that are usually plugged into our electric outlets. So they are not related to general lighting, heating, cooling, ventilation, uh, and water heating like um, many of other speakers have talked about. So plug loads do not necessarily provide comfort to human beings. However, it is very important for us to understand plug load because they can be significantly larger. And when you look at the photos, so these become norm in many households. You have multiple extension cords, a lot of plug-ins. Sometimes you even couldn't find the space to put those things. So that represents huge energy consumption. So when we look at how energy is used in homes, so there are different end use categories. So according to residential energy consumption survey 2009 data, so we can show most uh, home energy was for space heating, 42%, followed by the second largest category, electronics, lighting, and other appliances, about 30%. Then 18% for water heating, 6% for air conditioning, and 5% for refrigeration. So today's talk will be addressing the two end-use categories, accounting for 35% of energy consumption, but we do not uh, include lighting portion. And the trend, so when we look at the over the past 30 years, so our population grew by 30%, and the number of households grew by 40%. But fortunately, in this relation, our total home energy consumption grew in a slower rate. So if you look at the diagram here, so in 1980s, we used around slightly over nine um, quadrillion BTU of energy. And in 29, so we used just over 10 quadrillion BTU energy. So that does represent huge growth. So this is benefit from the improved uh, performance of building envelope like with more insulations as well as efficiency improvement in heating, cooling equipment, water heaters, refrigerators we used in homes. However, the efficiency gain were offset by some other uses so we can say increase the number of homes with cooling equipment and also the large amount of plug-in appliances and devices we use at home, so that increased that end-use category from 21% to 35%. So we may envision in the future so that end-use will continue growth with all more like electronics we plug in at home. So the uh, survey data actually shows the ownership of uh, many different appliances like dishwashers, clothes washers, clothes dryers, in home actually increase gradually over the years. So now reach almost 100%. So you can see some already over 95%. Uh, like some older homes started to do upgrades. So they have new appliances. And in addition to that, so for some other appliances, the household may have multiple units of that. So you have multiple refrigerators, multiple computers. And on average, your household has 2.5 TV uh, sits in home, and so now over 50% of family have three plus televisions at home. So all of this will increase energy consumption related to plug load. And we also have some new um, electronic devices, uh, personal uh, smartphones, so everything you have to plug in to charge, so that increase that energy consumption as well. So how do plug load um, like uh, use energy. 
So we understand all the plug-in appliances and devices consume energy while they are kept on. So that is a common understanding. But uh, many of us may not be aware that even those appliances and devices are turned off, but you still have that like cord plug-in, so it still continues to draw energy from the power grid. Okay, so that is referred to as standby power or vampire energy, so which contributes to 8 to 10 percent of our electricity consumption. So on average, U.S. families spend around $100 for that, like vampire energy. So here shows some examples of common household electronic devices and the typical standby power use. So the standby power use may fall into a range. So some may be lower and some devices may be higher than the typical one shown here. And I also show the associated annual energy cost. So if you only have each of this device, like one piece of each device, you end this together, so that's about $70. But if you have multiple uh, same type of devices in the home, so that quickly end up the total cost, so it could be over $100. So now we want to deal with the plug load issues. So what are the solutions and where should we start? So if we are going to purchase new appliances and electronics for new home, so we may start it to purchase everything with Energy Star qualified or Energy Star certified product logo. But if we consider replacement, so we have to decide up the priorities, so I will talk about that in a minute. So first, I want to introduce the Energy Star program. So this program is a federal program that promotes energy efficient product and services. So this program was created in 1992 by DOE and EPA. So on its website, if you um, input your uh, search criteria, so you will get a list of qualified product with estimated annual energy consumption, so you have a good idea, so what are the expected costs. And the Energy Star label normally displayed on the appliances themselves, or sometimes people just put on the appliances, and sometimes, or like the they have different ways to show this, like uh, if you go to Home Depot, so there are products um, bear that logo, so they also show that information on the website. And another way we can find out is through this Energy Guide Labeling um, Program. So this labeling program was created in the 1980s and managed by uh, the Federal Trade Commission, so which is the uh, national Consumer Protection Agency in this country. So this was created for the energy con conservation purpose. So on this energy guide um, tag, so you can see information about the uh, equipment you are considering buying and how the energy consumption of this equipment and in relation with other similar models. So like in the model, in the middle side of this tab, you can see the estimated energy cost for this piece of equipment is um, six, seven dollars. And the range is from um, 57 to 74. So you kind of know how efficient this it is. And in the right bottom color, if this applies qualified for Energy Star, they has earned the Energy Star certified applies, so they have a logo show there. So if you look at this energy guide tag, you can easily see it is Energy Star qualified and certified. And if you go to the website, you input your search criteria, so you will get something similar like this. So for the criteria I put in, so I get 1,707 record about the model number as well as annual energy consumption. So there are a lot of options for us to choose from. And for the Energy Star certified appliances and devices, they are already cost effective to consumers. So if you buy this normally, they do not end additional cost. And how much we can save on average the Energy Star certified appliances can save us 20 to 30% 
energy compared to conventional models that meet the minimum energy standard in this country. And some models can save more, like the Energy Star labeled computers can save 30 to 65 percent, and some office equipment can even save up to 75 percent. So they also show the annual cost if you have a, a price. Uh, annually spend $200 in energy bill, so 20% saving will be around $40 you can save. Um, EPA also provides some energy saving calculation tools. So before you do your replacement, you can actually try these tools to see what might be the cost of savings. So if you are going to replace your old refrigerator, you can try this flip your fridge calculator by input your current model number and year of manufacturing, and then you can see how much money you can save in five years. So for some old appliances, even it works fine, but the energy consumption of that appliances is much, much higher than the newer model. So that is true if you have 10 years washers, so that consumes significant amount of energy compared to today's model. So a 15 years old refrigerator will consume twice as much energy as the newer model. So there is a benefit to replace old appliances. And also currently we have rebate program managed by uh, your utility provider. So if you replace your refrigerator with the Energy Star certified model, so you receive $50 rebate, and you can recycle your old equipment when it's still in working condition for another $50. So you can avoid the fee charged by the retail store to pick up your old equipment. So that's about $160 extra savings in addition to energy savings. Um, EPA also provides Energy Star most efficient label, so that distinguish uh, most efficient models among those that are already qualified for Energy Star. So this representing cutting edge technology. So if you search the website, so currently they have these nine different categories of products available. So this list is updated annually. So you can see most efficient 2017 is the most current version. And the EPA is also ending price information, location information to enhance custom service. If you are interested in applies, so you look into the website, so they provide the price range by comparing different sources by online stores and also local retailers. So in the current stage, Energy Star most efficient product does cost extra money, so may not be cost effective without incentives. So that is why the DOE also provide incentive to mold those most efficient models. And when we consider replace old equipment or appliances, so we have the constraints about the budget in reality, so we cannot replace all of them altogether. So there is a priority. So how to determine our priorities depend on the annual energy consumption of those appliances. We start with appliances with a higher energy consumption. So if you have this like water heater for the spa, so annually it spend $180. So if you can provide 20% uh, energy improvement, so you actually can receive benefit of $36 or more. Then we move to the appliances with lower energy consumption, so with a lower priority like TV computers. So this is a recommendation. And when we look at the solution to standby power, so we understand if you already purchase Energy Star qualified product, so many of those products already have uh, efficient power management, like your computer will sleep automatically, and also like their lower uh, standard uh, power will also save you plug-in and standby energy. And we also want to turn off the appliances that are not in frequent use, like if you have an extra TV set in the guest room or VCRs, not frequent used, so just they completely turn that off and unplug. And if you recommend if you have PC in homes, so turn off the monitor if that PC will not be used for more than 20 minutes and shut it down if not used for 
two hours to save energy. And we can buy a low cost watt meter. So if you are wondering, so how much energy will be consumed by an individual appliances and electronics, so we can measure, so we can take targeted action. And the next thing is very easy switch. So if you use a switchable power strip, so you can have a switch to turn that off. So that is easier for you to manage multiple appliances and electronics. And the newer technology like this smart strip show here, so the cost is around $20 up to $40. So on that green switch, you can see the mark different outlets with different colors. There is a control outlet like that blue color. If you plug in your TV set there, so you have some other things like you run VCRs or you have like your um, hard drives for computers. So you can put there in those green outlets. So when you turn off your control device like the TV set or computer, so the other switched outlets will be turned off completely so that you can save the energy for printers and hard drives you collect it to the outlet. And if you have something that has to be kept always on, so like the modern cable box or phone, so you can plug in those red color outlets. Okay, so this is just simple technology cost, uh, not very much to buy. And the look into the future, so there are green switch. So if you use green switch technology, you activate that green switch, it will send out wireless signal to collected light switches and outlets, so they can turn off those devices altogether. And this system so far is still expensive, so I check online. So if you purchase a green switch with a couple of linked light switches and outlets, so that system costs over $1,000. So it may not be paid back in a short time, but when we look into the future, the technology will become cheaper, so become affordable. So now we also have smart home control platform, you can use your smartphones. So this may also be an option in the future. So while you are in the office, you realize I forgot to turn something off. So you can do that while you use smartphone. Okay, so this is just a, a very brief overview of the energy efficient appliances and plug load management. So while my colleagues will talk about more about the vampire energy, uh, thank you very much. As you can see, we push one hour presentation to the afternoon. And, uh, so this is our question and answer for all of the speakers. I know uh, Kevin has left. Uh, save your question for him. You know, check, we, uh, maybe reach you through email. Uh, questions for all the speakers. Uh, first, about the chance. Uh, then, uh, Uh, if not, I think we will uh, go to the lunch session. How many of you, let me ask you, how many of you want to go to uh, tour the main core and also Lutrans uh, advanced lighting control in this room time? Yeah, how many yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and then I think I appreciate you know, some people can do that later. So we only can accommodate about 15 people, so at most 20 people. Uh, so we'll have lunch. And then at 12.45, I think if you can, go there a little early. Maybe let's see, try and push a little ahead, 12.40, is that okay? Now we start lunch, and at 12.40, let's go to the encore uh, for the demonstration. Then I will ask you to come back instead of 1.15, or we'll come back at 1.10, and then we'll, you know, we'll push in one more presentation. That's where do we need for that? Uh, at the door, at the you know, near in the lobby near the door, and I will meet you over at 12:40. So let's have a lunch, have a break, and we have some exhibition here. Um, so, and, uh, check out. Thank you.